Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the most recent observations coming from the James Webb and the Hubble telescope, and specifically observations in regards to extremely powerful collisions. And to be more exact, we're going to take a look at the violent and chaotic world of planetary formation. Something that we actually don't get to observe right here in the solar system, mostly because here we have things that have already been established billions of years ago. And so when we look at our own solar system today, things do seem relatively calm. But based on a lot of modern theories, we know that this was not always the case. And it's quite likely that the early solar system was essentially kind of like a cosmic bumper car arena. An area filled with massive objects smashing into each other all over the place that eventually resulted in the formation of different larger objects and at some point formed planets. But for a very long time all of this was basically just based on simulations and various models. So essentially we always see the aftermath but not the actual event. For example in our own solar system we see the debris in the asteroid belt but we have no idea how all of this started. But now, thanks to JWST and thanks to the Hubble telescope, we have new definitive observations from two different star systems, where collisions seem to be happening in real time and the evidence is very strong. And so today we're going to discuss one of the more famous star systems known as FOMO Hole and a slightly less known system referred to as HD 131488. Discussing new discoveries coming from these systems and discoveries that might have actually changed our perspective on what we always believed, changing everything we thought we knew about how worlds are built in various star systems. And well, let's start with FOMO Hole. Mostly because here the discovery is just a little bit more exciting and because the star system itself is very well known and you can physically see it in the night skies as this is a very famous star. And a star that's only approximately 25 light years away in the constellation of Pisces Austrinus. And this star is pretty bright. Mostly because it's larger and more massive than the sun and because it does contain partners. Although over the years scientists also discovered that it seems to contain a very large dust disk. This was discovered back in 2005, but then by 2008 researchers discovered something super exciting. Here astronomers believe that for the first time ever they actually captured a visible light image of a distant planet orbiting another star. Or in other words, this was a direct observation of another planet, which was previously completely impossible. And as the tradition goes, this now became FOMO Hole B, an object so exciting that it almost right away received a proper name. It became known as Dagon. But because this was such an exciting discovery, a lot of astronomers joined in and wanted to find out more about it by observing it even more. And this is where something really bizarre started happening. Over the years, the planet basically kind of started to vanish. Or to be more exact, it started to expand, but also kind of fade, eventually disappearing completely. And so when in 2023 scientists looked at this object again, it was completely gone and there was nothing left behind. Which of course led to a massive debate in the scientific community. So was this some kind of a disappearing planet? Or was this a planet at all? So what exactly was this? and what could have possibly happened. And it just so happens that we now finally have an answer because yet another such object was discovered in the same system. We now have a new point of light that suddenly appeared in exactly the same system in a very similar location but with a different orbit. And this new source is now simply known as CS2, short for Circumstellar Source 2. CS1 is the one you see right there and that's the one that was observed previously. But importantly, this new source seems to appear almost exactly the same as the one from 2008, despite being in a different position. Here's roughly how they compare to each other, and so they don't look exactly the same, but they do look very similar. Which is a really important confirmation for one hypothesis scientists have been discussing for a very long time, a collisional hypothesis. So here we're not looking at planets at all, we're actually looking at extremely luminous debris cloud left behind by massive space rocks smashing into one another. So essentially we're looking at this very very large bubble of dust resulting from the collision. But we're not looking at large planets here because researchers believe they don't really exist yet. So what exactly happened then? Well right now the suggestion is that these collisions involved planetesimals, basically rocky building blocks of various planets that technically still exist on the outskirts of the solar system or even in the asteroid belt. And in terms of size, these objects were probably between 30 and 60 kilometers in diameter, kind of similar to the Martian moon Phobos. And when two of these massive rocks collide at very high velocities, they don't just crack, they do release a vast amount of energy and a huge cloud of fine dust 
that then starts to reflect starlight, making them appear like a bright planet if looked at from planet Earth. So in essence, what we're seeing is the reflection from all of the dust released by the collision. But over time, the pressure from the star and possibly the gravity from other objects pushes these tiny grains away, causing the cloud to expand and eventually disappear from the view, with the central object that collided very likely just becoming invisible because it's kind of small. And so by itself, this is not something that's unusual. But what is unusual is, of course, the frequency of collisions, because here these observations suggest that they actually happen very, very often. Originally, scientists believed that these collisions might happen once every 100,000 years, especially between objects that are very large. But in this case, we observed two of them in just 20 years, one in 2008 and one now. And so, hypothetically, if we were to somehow look at this star system for thousands and thousands of years, we might actually see this whole system sparkling with these flashes of light with the additional calculations suggesting that the system very likely contains over 300 million of these objects, because that's the only way we can explain the frequency of collisions. And something very similar very likely happens in other star systems as well. Although because this is a relatively recent discovery, for now at least, that's basically all we know. As always, you can learn more about the discovery and the scientists who found this in one of the links in the description in a study right here. Okay, so that's the FOMO hole system and the observations from the Hubble telescope. But we also have observations from the James Webb from somewhere much, much farther away. And here this is based on this particular study, where scientists focused on observing the infrared emissions from the system HD131488. And specifically the observations from the gas in the system that kind of sort of doesn't make sense unless there are even more collisions happening here as well. Now, first of all, this is not a new star system, and scientists have studied this previously because the dust here did not make a lot of sense, specifically because there was an unusual hot dust ring and a cold dust ring, as you see in this image. But unlike Fomal Ho, this system is much more difficult to study because it's approximately 497 light years away from us, and so it's kind of difficult to observe. Nevertheless, this hot dust ring at first was believed to be the result of collisions, although what collided with what was not clear. But it was assumed to be planetesimals as well. This was observed and studied back in 2010, and so back then this was a pretty exciting system as well. But the recent observations from the James Webb detected something remarkable that was not previously seen. Here we had ultraviolet fluorescent carbon monoxide gas that was just a little bit too hot, which allowed scientists to explain all of this in a very different way. Because usually gas in a young star system is expected to be a leftover from the star's birth. But the carbon monoxide gas around this star is quite unique. Here it was warm, but not in the way we expected it to be warm. It essentially had a very high vibrational temperature, approximately 8200 Kelvin or approximately 9000 degrees Celsius, which essentially tells scientists that the gas in this case is not just orbiting the star like we normally would expect it to do, but seems to be constantly replenished by destruction of various exocomets. In other words, this is maybe what we're observing in this system. And so here, as these comets smash into each other, they seem to release a lot of water vapor and carbon monoxide, which then slowly cools down over time, but is then replenished by new collisions, which constantly add more and more gas into the system. And so in this case, if we looked at the star system from the side, it might resemble something like this. There is the cold disk and the hot disk created by all of these collisions. And so here, this is direct evidence that a lot of these planetary systems seem to be quite active. In other words, all of the gas and dust in these systems doesn't just orbit around the star, but seems to be actively recycled through violent events, which then results in these very powerful emissions visible from planet Earth. And well, technically, this is something that we actually do expect to happen. So here we have a direct evidence for many different models. But there are, of course, other reasons why these two discoveries are so important. First, there's a bit of a cautionary tale, specifically a cautionary tale if one day we decide to maybe visit some kind of a planet out there. And here we're of course talking about real, real far future. And so imagine we launch some kind of a space mission hoping to visit a planet, but turns out that this planet was not real. It was just a dust cloud masquerading as a planet that disappeared hundreds if not thousands of years ago. And so in this case, it basically tells us we have to be pretty careful in confirming that the planets we discovered are actually real. And so here, Fomoho B, that even received the proper name, now has to be completely erased. And we definitely don't want to spend years studying a habitable planet 
only to realize it's just some kind of a gas. Second, this also teaches us a little bit more about planetary defense when it comes to our own planet. By studying the structure and composition of these debris clouds from far away, we can actually learn so much more about internal strength of asteroids, because they probably are very similar to what we have in the solar system too. And so by knowing what happens when these asteroids collide and how much energy is released, this will help scientists studying Earth defense in trying to predict what might happen if we decide to collide with an asteroid once again, kind of similar to what happened during the DART mission you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. And so this is the kind of data needed for missions like DART, which aim to protect Earth from potential asteroid impacts. But likewise, this also tells us a little bit more about the famous Theia hypothesis. Essentially, it confirms that moon-forming impact that happened four and a half billion years ago might not be an unusual event after all and possibly happen in many systems out there. In other words, planets like Earth containing a large moon may actually be pretty common, assuming we see more of these collisions in the future and assuming that most systems experience these collisions just as frequently. And in this case, we're seeing these violent impacts in their natural habitat. And remember, without this collision four and a half billion years ago, neither you or me would be here right now because it was very likely the reason life eventually formed on the planet. There are some videos in the description that talk about this concept a little bit more. But because of this recent observation from the formal hole system, scientists are now hoping to look at the star for at least three more years in order to see what actually happens to this cloud and how it evolves over time. And well, one of the first observations is going to be looking for water ice. Because by studying the size of these dust grains, we can then see exactly what these planetesimals are made from. And so by studying all of this, it will hopefully help us learn a little bit more about how our own star system evolved and of course how all of this led to the formation of life. But until future discoveries or until we find something else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We'll definitely come back and discuss FOMO Hole once again in some of the future videos and you can also learn more about the system in one of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.